So this lecture is part of an online commutative algebra course and will be about completions of rings. So um, we'll first define what a completion of a ring is. So we've got a ring R and it has an ideal I and its completion is just the limit of the rings R over I to the N. This is sometimes called a projective limit or inverse limit or something. So what this means is we're taking the ring R over I and there's a map from R over I squared to this and the map from R over I cubed to that and so on. And we just take the um, limit of these, which means um, we must take an element A0 of R over I and an element a1 of r over i squared and element a2 of r over i cubed, such that a1 is the image of a2 and a0 is the image of a1 and so on. And it's easier to see what's going on if we look at an example. So let's choose the basic example. Let's take r to be the ring of polynomials over a field. And we take i to be the... Um, ideal generated by x, and then we see r over i is just k, and r over i squared is just kx over x squared. So the elements of this look like an element a0, and the elements of this can be all represented as a0 plus a1x, um, we're sort of taking x squared to be 0, and similarly r over i cubed looks like kx over x cubed, and its elements can be represented as, um, well, they're, they're not quite degree two polynomials because you're really saying x cubed is equal to zero. So what we have to do is we take um, a constant and then a polynomial of degree one and then a polynomial of degree two and so on. And these all have to be compatible. So the constant must be the constant term of this polynomial and this polynomial must be this polynomial modulo x squared and so on. So if we put these all together, we're obviously just getting a formal power series. So this sort of goes on forever. So the completion of a ring, which is normally denoted by R with a little hat on it. So we see that the completion of K of X with respect to the ideal I is just the formal power series ring, which is usually indicated by putting two square brackets around it. Um, similarly, if we take the ring of polynomials in two variables and complete it with respect to the ideal generated by X and Y, this just turns out to be formal polynomials in two variables and so on. Um, now let's look at a different example where we take the ring to be the integers z, and we take the ideal to be the ideal of all multiples of 10. Um, and then let's figure out what, what the completion is. Well, the completion is, is we have to take z modulo 10, and z modulo 100, and z modulo 1000, and we take an element in each of these, and we kind of stick them all together. Well, an element of Z modulo 10 can be represented as some sort of, um, we, we, we can just represent as the last digit of an integer. So, so it's an integer mod 10. Something in Z modulo 100 might be um, represented by a number up to 100 or integer modulo 100. Z modulo 1000, we might have an integer modulo 1000. And if we go on like this, we see what we get isn't, sort of infinitely long integer. So it's a sort of infinitely long decimal integer. So you can think of this as being sort of the opposite of the construction of real numbers. So for real numbers, if we take a real number, we have a finite number of digits before the decimal point and an infinite number after. For uh, the completion of Z, we have no digits after the decimal point, but an infinite number before. And you can, you can check the usual rules of addition and multiplication actually work perfectly well for these, except of course, addition and multiplication are now infinite operations. Um, 
Well, the ring, this is called the ring of 10 adic integers. And people don't actually use it much for the following reason. And by the Chinese remainder theorem, z modulo 10 to the n is isomorphic to z modulo 2 to the n times z modulo 5 to the n. So if we take the inverse limit of all these, it's basically, um, so, so the inverse limit of z modulo 10 to the n is just the inverse limit of z modulo 2 to the n times z modulo 5 to the n, which is the inverse limit of z modulo 2 to the n times the inverse limit of z modulo 5 to the n. So the 10 adic integers, so the 10 adic integers might be denoted by z um, 10. So the 10 adic integers are just isomorphic to the 2 adic integers times the five adic integers. And you can do this sort of reduction um, um, for any composite number. So you may as well just focus on the on the n adic integers for n a prime. So these are the two adic integers and these are the five adic integers. And more generally the, the p adic integers for p prime are very widely used in, in number theory. Um, and you should think of the p-adic integers as being a sort of analog of the um, ring of power series. So, so you remember that the ring of polynomials is very similar in some ways to the ring of integers. So these are both principal ideal domains, for example. And a maximal ideal z kind of corresponds to a maximal ideal 2 in the integers. And if we take the completion um, of polynomials with respect to this ideal. This is just the ring of formal power series. And this is analogous to the completion of the integers at two, which is the two adic integers. Um, so rings of formal power series and rings of p adic integers are in many ways rather similar. Um, by the way, um, it's common in algebraic topology to write z modulo 2, z2 for the ring of integers mod 2. Um, um, in number theory and algebraic geometry, you never do this because um, you use tend to use z2 for the ring of two adic integers. And the trouble with this notation is it's rather ambiguous. This notation for the integers mod 2 has the advantage that it's completely unambiguous. No one could mistake this for anything else. Um, anyway, uh, um, notice, by the way, that z10 has zero divisors because it's, it's equal to z2 times z5. So you can take an element that's one in here and zero in here and multiply it by an element that's zero in here and one in here, and their product is just going to be zero. Um, so even though z does not have zero divisors, its completion at this ideal does have zero divisors. Instead, it's not terribly easy to write down the zero divisors directly. You have to find a series of integers that are 1 modulo 2 to the n, but divisible by 5 to the n. So it's you know, it's not exactly difficult, but it's not completely trivial. Um, so um, there's an alternative construction of the completion. Um, so, you know, in analysis, you define the reals to be the completion of the rational numbers. And that's certainly not a completion in the sense that I've um, talked about here. However, they are quite closely related. So you remember when you construct the ring of reals from the ring of rational numbers, what we do is we have a metric on the rational numbers where we define the distance from x to y to be the absolute value of x minus y. And then we can define the completion of any metric space. So R is this um, is defined to be the set of Cauchy sequences um, modulo the set of Cauchy sequences 
that's 10 to 0. And I'm not going to remind you of the definition of Cauchy sequences because it's got far too many quantifiers in and I always get muddled up by it. Um, and now we can do the same um, for any other distance. So we, we, we can put a, um, a distance on the ring R by putting the distance from x to y to be the absolute value of x minus y. Well, what's the absolute value of x minus y? Or rather, what is the absolute value of x in the ring? Well, we define x, the absolute value of x, to be c to the minus n if x is in i to the n and x is not in i to the n plus 1. And it's equal to naught if x is in all i to the n, for instance, if x is equal to zero. Um, and now it's not too difficult to check that the completion of the ring, of the ring R in this metric, this is just another way of writing down the inverse limit of R over i, um, R over i to the n. Um, so that gives you an alternative construction. Um, and um, th there are some differences. For example, for the real numbers, we know that the um, absolute value of x minus x plus y is less than or equal to the absolute value of x plus the absolute value of y. So the distance from x to y is less than or equal to the distance from x to z plus the distance from z to y. For the, so this is for, 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 the, for the absolute value of the reals. For the absolute value of r with respect to an ideal, we actually have a stronger thing. We, know, we find the absolute value of x plus y is less than the maximum of the absolute value of x and the absolute value of y. And the distance from x to y is less than the maximum of the distance from x to z and the distance from z to y. So the, 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 this is called the ultrametric inequality. So, so the, dis, the distance function that we've defined for rings has rather stronger properties than the usual distance function for the reals. Um, anyway, um, th th there are sort of three um, themes that appear for completions. So first of all, completions of rings are similar to the reals in many ways. For example, over the reals, we can define Bessel functions and gamma functions and powers. And we can sometimes define Um, powers, x to the y, gamma functions, um, even Bessel functions for some rings um, that are that are completions. I mean, you can't do this always do this for all rings, but you can do a certain amount of of analysis on completions of rings. Um, this is particularly pop popular when you take R to be the, when you take the completion to be the ring of p-adic integers, and there's a, there's a whole branch of p-adic mathematics where you go through um, all real analysis and generalize it to to p-adic numbers. Um, so the second major principle about completions is that it is easy to solve equations. Whoops, solve equations in completions of rings. We will be talking about this later, where we use something called Hensel's lemma, which is the, 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 the specific thing that makes it easy to solve equations. Um, the third principle is that completion is a sort of stronger version of localization. And um, um, this is what I want to talk about 
That's the third one that I want to talk about a bit more um, in the rest of this. First of all, we notice that if R is a unit, that this is R in the ring R, is a unit in R over um, uh, P to the N, it is a unit in R over P to the two N. And this is quite easy to see because if we have one plus R S um, is, is in P to the N, so, so this means R is a unit in R over P to the N. Then we just square it and we find that one plus R S squared is in P to the two N. Well, this is equal to one plus R times something or other, uh, don't really care what the something or other is, it's 2s plus rs squared or something like this. So, so this indicates that r is a unit in r over p to the 2n. And the inverse is unique. So um, the inverses of r in r over p to the n for n greater than or equal to 1 are compatible and give an inverse to R in the completion. So, so this gives a way of um, finding units in the completion. All we have to do is to show that something is a unit in R modulo some power of P. Um, and um, um, now, now suppose M is a maximal ideal. And we're going to look at the completion of R at the maximal ideal M. Um, well, um, in this case, we find that um, in this case, R hat is now a local ring. Um, this is because all elements um, um, in um, of R not in M are units in R over M, which is a field. Um, Um, so, um, um, any element of um, R over I to the N, not, so R over M to the N, not in R, not in M over M to the N, um, has an inverse. Um, also, we, we, we notice we get a map from Rm to the completion, where this is just the localization. Um, because this means you just invert all elements not in M. And we've just said that if something is in R is not in M, then it, it has an inverse in R in the completion R hat. Um, if R is notarian, Um, and an integral domain, um, then the intersection of i to the n is equal to zero. So um, r is actually contained in the completion. Um, th th these can fail if m is not a maximal ideal. So, 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 so all these fail if um, if P is a prime ideal, for example, if we take P equals naught in Z, then the completion Z hat is just Z, which is not a local ring. So the completion of a, of a ring as a prime ideal need not be um, 
a local ring in general. This doesn't matter because if you've got a prime ideal, you can first localize it to make it maximal and then take the completion if, if you want. Um, um, another example is um, um, if, you, if you take the ring Z, and again, if you now localize it at zero, this is equal to Q, and now this is not the subring of the completion. So the, 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 the localization is a maps to the completion for maximal ideals, but not necessarily for prime ideals. Um, we also get weird things happening if the ring isn't notarian. For example, suppose we take the ring R to be, um, say, the um, ring of formal power series in X to the 1 over N for N um, greater than 0 in Z. So it's the sort of Puisse expansions. Then this is local. And if, if, but if we take the maximal ideal to be generated by all um, powers of x, all positive powers of x, then the completion is just um, c because m to the n is equal to m for all n. So the localization is not contained in the completion even though we're completing at a maximal ideal. The, the problem here is the ring isn't notarian, so all sorts of weird things go wrong. Um, so um, generally, the picture you get is that for M maximal, um, we get this series of ring homomorphisms R maps to the, um, to the localization which maps to the completion, which maps to R modulo M to the three, which maps to R modulo M squared, which maps to R modulo M. And you can think of all these as being a series of rings getting closer and closer to this, to this field. Um, and if you try and draw the spectrum of spectra of these rings, well, the spectrum of R might be something like that if R is the spectrum of say a uh, nodal curve. The spectrum of its localization is sort of looks like this, except we miss out a finite number of points. You remember the spectrum of the localization kind of um, looks like this, except we delete all the points. So, so it's kind of, we've removed some points. The spectrum of the completion at say this maximal ideal looks much finer. It kind of looks like this bit here. So, so the, 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 the spectrum of the completion in some sense just looks like this bit. So we, you, you can think of informally that we've got maps between these. Now here, the spectrum just is a point. And here the spectrum is a sort of infinitesimal neighborhood of the points. So in this case, it might have sort of two infinitely close points, whatever that means. And this will be a slightly bigger version of this and so on. So you can imagine we're, we're, we're kind of getting, um, I mean, the spectrum of all these rings is really a point, but you can think of it as being a sort of multiple point in some sense. So what's happening is that um, we're getting sort of bigger and bigger spectra as we go in this direction, um, as, as we go from the ring to its localization, to its completion, to various quotients by powers of M. Um, if, if we look at a slightly more at a slightly more explicit example, suppose we take R to be, say, the ring K X Y modulo Y squared minus X cubed minus X squared. So in this case its spectrum really does look like um, that. Um, and let's um, work over a field of characteristic zero. And now we can ask, what does the completion of R look like? Um, here we're taking the completion at the ideal M, which is just generated by X and Y. 
Well, this is going to be the, the formal power series ring in two variables, quotient out by y squared minus x cubed minus x squared. Well, over formal power series, this actually factorizes. So this is now equal to y um, minus x times the square root of 1 plus x times y plus x times the square root of 1 plus x. So you notice this is a full power series, which is a perfectly good element of um, the, this formal power series ring. Um, so we see that this, this ring here has zero divisors, because in this ring, y minus x times the square root of 1 plus x times y plus x times the square root of 1 plus x is just equal to zero. And as I said, the spectrum of this kind of looks a bit like this, um, where we've, we've got two copies of the um, spectrum of K of the formal power series ring. You remember the spectrum of this is just two points, uh, um, a generic point and a closed point. And we take two copies of this and identify the closed point. And you see what is happening is that we're just picking out a sort of infinitesimally small piece of this spectrum. And that's the spectrum of this, um, this completion. And you can see that this is um, um, reducible. It's the union of two closed subsets, um, pretty obviously. This corresponds to the fact that the um, this completion has zero divisors. Um, so in particular, we notice that the, um, if a ring R is an integral domain, then a localization R um, S to minus one is also an integral domain, but the completion need not be, even if you're taking a completion to a maximal ideal. And geometrically, this corresponds to the fact that if you're localizing at a point, you're sort of um, throwing away some points in some sense, but you can still somehow see most of the ring and you can see that it's still irreducible. But if you complete, you're, you're focusing in much more closely to this point, and now you can't see uh, this bit of the spectrum, and and you think the the the, the spectrum is now reducible. Um, so I'll finish by trying to draw a picture of the of a completion, and the completion I'm going to draw is just the two adic integers. So. This is the inverse limit of z modulo 2 to the n for all n. Um, and you can draw a picture of it a bit like this. First of all, the last digit can be 0 or 1. And then if the last digit is 0, the next last digits can be 0, 0, or 0, 1. And here, the last digits could be 1, 0, or 1, 1. And then inside here, we have each of these, there are two possibilities of what the three last digits are, and then there are more possibilities for what the four last digits are. So you can think of the two adic integers as being the sort of intersection of all these closed sets. The, so the first closed set is just going to be a, um, this disk, and then we take these two disks inside it, and then four disks inside that and take the intersection of all these. And you can see that this is now Essentially, what we've got is homeomorphic to a Cantor set, which is also homeomorphic to um, a two-point set um, to the power of infinity. That's a countable infinity if you care about the difference. Um, there's an alternative picture of the two adic integers, or rather the three adic integers, which is drawn by um, for Menko, which I've got a picture of here, this comes from um, Koblitz's book on p-adic numbers, which I strongly recommend it if you want to find out more about them. And this is for Menko's picture of the 
phreatic numbers. I'll focus in on it a bit more so you can see. And uh, it looks really impressive, although frankly, I have no idea why this is a picture of the phreatic numbers, but that'll, uh, I guess it's an exercise for you to puzzle out why this is the phreatic numbers. Um, okay, so that's uh, the introduction to completions. And next lecture, we'll probably be looking at Hensel's lemma.